Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us to, for this uh, virtual open house with the Department of Architecture and our programs here. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. Um, I am your host tonight, Jim Fuller, Professor Fuller. I am the chair of the Department of Architecture. I'm also the program director for the undergraduate program, Architectural Design Plus Technology. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. And tonight we're gonna to run through a few slides as I'll be talking about our program and our, uh, the features of our program and some options you can explore in our program. Uh, feel free to put questions up on the Q&A. And after my presentation, we'll have uh, some students talk about our program and also about our organizations here in the Department of Architecture. So thank you for joining us. Well, let's get started. Well, why study architecture at the University of Hartford? I think one of the major reasons why uh, we think it's good to study with us is that we have very small classes and our enrollments are small, and this is intentional. We believe strongly that you wanna to come to a school of architecture in which you can make connections with the faculty, you can make connections with your fellow classmates, you can make connections with all the students throughout the different levels of the program, including undergraduate, but also in their graduate program. So by keeping our program small, we have about 165 undergraduate students and about 28 graduate students right now. So keeping that enrollment small, we're allowed to, you're allowed to uh, meet other, other students, you're allowed to meet your faculty and work with your faculty, and most important too, that the faculty get to know you pretty quickly in the program. Uh, so a small program, which means small class sizes. We keep our design studios typically between 12 and 15 students. Uh, which in itself is not unusual for architecture programs, but we like to maintain that low level. So again, the faculty can get to know you early on in those studios. But along with that, we also have uh, low class sizes and uh, other classes throughout the university, not just in architecture. So even though our studios are between 12 and 15 students and our history class, maybe 25 to 30 students, the other classes that you'll take at the University of Hartford will be in that same range, about 25 to 30 students as a cap. So in your math classes, your physics classes, uh, those other courses you take outside the Department of Architecture, you'll be in a small class as well. And so we do not have classes here of 100 or 200 students in a massive lecture hall. Uh, the faculty here at the University of Hartford pride themselves on being teaching faculty first, and they wanna to get to know you. So whether it's architecture or your required physics courses, you'll be in small class sizes. We also know that you're coming to a school of architecture because you want to study architecture. You don't want to spend a semester or entire year studying uh, support courses or broad uh, courses and other subject areas. You want to come in and start studying architecture right away. So our curriculum begins uh, in the fall of your first semester. You will have two architecture classes. You'll have an architectural drawing class and you'll have an architectural history class. And that continues in the spring of first year where you'll take design studio. So in the first year, you'll have an architectural design studio. You'll also have a second history class. And you'll also have a class which I really enjoy teaching, introduction to the built environment. So in your first year as an architecture student, you will have five architecture courses. Again, we wanna get you right into the program and learning about what architecture is all about. Uh, we are a strong program that believes in career preparation. So our program has a balance between design studios, between technical courses, between courses such as construction documents and advanced computer modeling. Uh, these other courses are there to prepare you for different careers. So as a, a graduate after four years with a Bachelor of Science in Architectural Design and Technology, you're marketable. Uh, firms will want you, uh, whether it's an architecture firm or maybe some of you may be thinking about construction management or engineering or some other discipline related to architecture and the design and construction industry. We're preparing you in these four years to get that job and, and, and on a career path. And a career path that suits your goals. Uh, our, our curriculum is pretty well defined for the first five semesters with these, prep, uh, these support courses and studio courses. In the last three semesters, we open up to many electives. So as you gain knowledge and understanding of architecture and design in the first five semesters, you're beginning to also understand your role. Where do you see yourself? in the design and construction industry. And later on in the, in the last three semesters, you're able to take more electives that uh, improve your skills along the direction you wanna go in. So again, it might be construction management, 
It might be professional practice. It might be more advanced design studios. It might be more advanced computer modeling courses. Uh, whatever you feel that you want to gain the skills and knowledge that prepares you for a career. We have very close connections with the professions. We have uh, visiting uh, architects that come into our studios to give juries. We have uh, adjunct or part-time faculty that are experts in their field to come in and teach a course. And we have these very strong connections with the Connecticut chapter of the American Institute of Architects to provide, again, adjuncts, pr provide site visits, provide visits to architectural firms, and to provide guest speakers to help you make connections. And those connections lead to internships and they lead to full-time jobs. We have four architecture studio organizations, student organizations in our department. We'll, have, we'll hear more about that little, a little later on from the students. We have, we have five students that are joining us tonight. But we have four student organizations, the American Institute of Architecture Students, the National Organization of Minority Architecture Students, the Women in Architecture and Design, and the Construction Institute Student Organization. All there to help you make connections, to improve your skills, and to have you meet other students, but also have a lot of fun too. We have some study abroad options. I know right now it's uh, a little unusual to be thinking about study abroad in the, in the situation we're in, but this, this will change and we'll be able to go back to doing study abroad. Uh, we hope you're thinking about doing that in the future. Uh, we have several different ways that you can do study abroad. You can do it as a, a spring semester break, you can do it over the summer, or you can certainly do it as a full semester of study abroad. We do have one of our faculty member, Professor Sarek, who takes a group of our own students uh, study abroad in the spring semester. So you have an option also going with uh, your own class, your own classmates, and one of our own faculty to study abroad. Or you may choose to do a study abroad on your own or with a friend and travel to different places around the world. So a lot of options for study abroad. And we also have an accelerated Masters of Architecture program. This is a pretty exciting program that we initiated a few years ago. And this allows you as one of our undergraduate students to begin studying Masters of Architecture in your senior year as an undergrad. So you'd be completing a full semester of graduate work as, your, as a senior in the undergraduate program. You would then graduate in May with your Bachelor's of Science degree. You would stay for a summer to do another semester of the Master's program. And then one more academic year and you'll have your Master's. So it's really a five year uh, bachelor's of Science plus uh, a Master's of Architecture program. And that's very important to know because uh, the uh, most states in the United States require you to have a professional degree in architecture. In our situation here, that would be the Master's of Architecture. Right? So you, you can easily get a path and in five years, you could have those two degrees and be ready to take the licensing exam and become an architect. We do have three concentrations as well. So I spoke earlier about the opportunity for you to uh, improve your skills and to hone your skills in areas that you find uh, interesting and passionate about. Well, to, uh, to complement that, we also offer three different concentrations. So you would take the regular Bachelor's of Science undergraduate curriculum, but your electives would be uh, basically assigned or determined by specific courses that would meet the skills necessary to complete one of these concentrations. So the construction management concentration, that's focused on uh, teaching you the skills and knowledge to be able to go out and be on a project site, on a construction site, helping to run the project. So the construction process, uh, scheduling, budgeting, how that all works in the field. Uh, we also have a concentration in environmental sustainability. Now, I will say that all of our design studios have an emphasis on sustainability that's integral to the design studio as you go through the curriculum. But some students may feel like you want to get more knowledge about sustainability. You want to be able to do some research or to gain more technical background in sustainability. Well, the environmental sustainability option will allow you to do that. Again, taking those electives, that will improve your skills in this area. And we also have a professional practice concentration. This concentration is aimed for those students uh, that want to have their degree in architecture, to be in an architectural firm, but be a leader in that firm, become a, a partner or a principal in that firm. And so the professional practice concentrations uh, is focused on business applications, on business courses, and giving them those skills to prepare as an undergraduate to graduate, to go into an office 
and become a business leader as well as a leader in architecture. So many options to, again, improve your skills, tailor your curriculum later on to the direction you want to go in. Well, as I said, the AD plus T program, architectural design plus technology program, does prepare you for a career and with options. Uh, prepares you for a position in architecture, interior design and planning or related firms. It also can prepare you for positions in engineering or construction management or related firms. Some of our undergraduate architecture students really like engineering as well, which is not that uncommon in architecture, but they decide that they want the architecture degree, but maybe they want to get an engineering minor and that's very possible to do. Or we actually have a five year uh, program where you can get a bachelor's of science in architecture and technology, and also a bachelor's of science in civil engineering in five years. And we have several students now that are in that program. And it, again, it combines their love of architecture with their love of engineering and gives them two degrees in five years, which prepares them very strongly for positions in engineering or architecture or construction management. The BSAD plus T also prepares you for graduate programs in architecture. Uh, hopefully you would stay with us for, our, for your Masters of Architecture, but it prepares you for any two-year Masters of Architecture. Um, again, our students uh, typically, if they do not stay with us, uh, they go on to a two-year Masters. But again, by staying with us, you could complete that Masters in one year. And some of our students also gravitate more towards the related disciplines in design and construction. For example, landscape architecture, planning, or other disciplines that are not architecture, but are related to architecture, complement the architectural firm. You become a consultant to architectural firms on projects. You might be doing landscape design or planning and other disciplines like that. And again, some of our students have uh, finished our undergraduate degree, but their focus is more on construction management and they may have taken the construction management concentration but they want a more advanced degree in construction management. So the BSAD plus T program also prepares you for a graduate program in construction management. And looking down the road, as I said, the uh, most states in the United States require a professional degree in architecture to be able to take the licensing exam uh, after earning the internship hours. Uh, and our program prepares you to do that. And these are the different options that we have. So again, I mentioned this, what's called a track one or the accelerated masters. So four years for your bachelor's of science in AD plus T plus one year in a year in your master's of architecture. And again, this track one is only for our undergraduate students that are in the AD plus T program. It also prepares you for a track two masters of architecture. So this may be something that Maybe you uh, decide as an undergraduate here that you don't want to get into the master's program in your senior year. Maybe you're looking at uh, doing some engineering programs, engineering courses rather, maybe doing a minor in civil engineering as an undergraduate. And then you're deciding to stay with us and do the two-year master's. So that's an option. Uh, as one of our own students, you can choose to do the one-year accelerated master's, or you can choose to stay and do the two-year master's. It's really up to you. And some, some of our students have done this, again, because they want to do a minor in business or a minor in civil engineering. And that would preclude them from doing the one-year Masters of Architecture. But the advantage is they'd have a Bachelor's of Science with a minor in one of those disciplines, and then we would be able to stay with us and do a two-year Masters of Architecture to get that professional degree. As I said, the MR qualifies you to take the licensing exam. Uh, so there's this uh, uh, three components to becoming a licensed architect. There's the education component, which again would be a master's of architecture, that professional degree. Then it would be the internship requirements, which is currently around 3,700 hours. But just to let you know that when you complete high school, you can start earning those internship hours right after you complete your high school uh, degree, high school diploma. Right. And then there's the licensing exam itself. Right. Uh, so the Masters of Architecture program we have here also has electives involved and those electives are intended to provide you opportunities to take uh, more in-depth courses in architecture or to add complementary studies such as pursuing a Masters of Business Administration or a Masters of Science and Engineering 
or even a master's of fine arts. So our curriculum is designed to have a focus on architecture and professional practice of architecture, but we like to have give you these flexibilities so that you can choose the path that interests you. And our curriculum is scheduled so that you can still work while you're getting your master's. So I know it seems funny to be talking about a master's degree when you're finishing your high school program now, looking at undergraduate programs, but I think it's important to be thinking down the road and thinking the possibility of possibly pursuing the master's of architecture. Oh, I see one question here. Um, questions about the difference between, well, the career options between a Bachelor of Science in Civil versus a Bachelor of Science in AD plus T. Uh, the, the Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering would have you focus on civil, uh, civil engineering projects. So you'd be working on possibly designing the structures for a building. Uh, civil engineers also design bridges and roads. So the civil engineering would be designing those infrastructure elements or the structure of a, of a building, but you would not be designing or managing the team on a, on a building project. You'd be uh, simply, not simply, but you'd be designing the structure of that building. Where a Bachelor of Science in AD plus T gives you the skills and knowledge to be uh, the designer of the building itself, to take a leading role in an architectural firm as the designer, or project manager, uh, or someone who supervised constructions, oversees construction. So the AD plus T is broader in the sense of, of giving you skills in, in more areas. The civil engineering degree gives you uh, much more skills, but in a focused area in the civil side of it. Uh, so it's just, it just depends on your career. If you really value the engineering side and that's sort of your, your focus of being uh, more focused on the math and the designing of structures or bridges or infrastructure, then the civil engineering is good. If you like the idea of designing buildings and being part of the uh, sort of the leader of the team that puts buildings together, then the BS and AD plus T would be the path. Uh, student work, we have some images here of some, a couple of students here uh, with Andrew Peterson and Giancarlo Cardo uh, built a model for a uh, museum edition that's going on uh, locally. Uh, on the right side, we see Caroline uh, Peterson who graduated this past May. Uh, she's from Denmark and she did a senior thesis project of designing a facility that combined uh, senior housing with a, a kindergarten school. It was very innovative and she won some awards with this, uh, with this project. And uh, she's back in, in Denmark now and, and working and pursuing her master's uh, back at home in Denmark. Well, we do have a student spotlight. All of our students are fantastic, but we did pull out Terrell here as a, as a spotlight. Uh, again, Terrell graduated this past May. Uh, with his Bachelor of Science in Architectural Design plus Technology. He was also a student athlete uh, with track and field. So if you are an athlete and you're looking to do D1 athletics at the University of Hartford when you come, it's certainly possible. We have students that are on the, obviously the track and field team. We have students um, on baseball team. We have students on the soccer team. In fact, Caroline Peterson, who we just saw her project, she was on the soccer team, women's soccer team. Uh, so we do have opportunities that you can do a very rigorous architecture program as well as compete in D1 athletics and be successful. And uh, we do find that, as you probably found in high school, that as an athlete, you have to be organized to be able to get your schoolwork done and also practice and compete. Uh, so it's, it's uh, a lot, but you can certainly do it. And we welcome the opportunity to have you continue playing your sport here at the University of Hartford. Uh, he's currently, uh, Terrell is currently, uh, working on his MBA here at the University of Hartford. And he was in a senior thesis this past spring. I was one of his advisors. And he did a terrific project uh, redesigning an airport in Antigua. And it was a quite amazing project. He did a great job with that. So we're very, very proud of him. Well, where are our graduates work? A graduate works in a variety of locations. You see some of the firms on the right side where they work. Uh, major architectural firms in Connecticut, as well as construction management companies, Turner, Shamit, uh, both are construction management companies. Uh, so they have a, a lot of opportunity to gain work in architectural firm, engineering firms, construction management, landscape architecture firms. Uh, really, it's, it's 
it's endless possibility. And you see on the left side, some of the positions they actually have uh, uh, been hired for right after the four years of undergraduate. So obviously an intern architect, but also construction manager, specifications, you can go down the list, uh, even civil, civil engineering because they did a minor in civil or did the five-year degree, five-year two degrees, landscape architecture, et cetera. So a range of positions and a range of firms, but they all sought what they wanted to do. They all found their passion in the program and found ways to complement their passion. And they continue that uh, when they graduated in a firm. Right, coming back to the student organizations, again, these are the four student organizations that we have. They're all very active. And rather than have me talk about them, I'd rather have you hear from the students themselves. So I'm gonna ask Renee Perry to come in here now and talk about AIS and, uh, and Women in Architecture and Design. Renee. Hi guys, so I am Renee. I am a junior in Architecture and Design, and I am also president of Women in Architecture and Design. So Women in Architecture Design, we strive to advance and support our women students in the field of architecture and design through um, educational programming, mentorship, and illuminating career opportunities. Um, previously, we've helped host numerous panels with professionals in the field. Um, and we've also been able to help get our members connected to local firms through a partnership with Professional Women in Construction where we were able to provide mentorship to our students with their preferred firm. Um, additionally, Women in Architecture and Design has kind of made it their priority to make sure our studio, studio quality is running at best. So we've been able to kind of go into studio and repaint some of the walls. We've helped with numerous studio cleanups. And yeah, that's Women in Architecture and Design. Um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about AIS. AIS, the American Institute of Architectural Students, is a independent student-run organization dedicated to providing unmatched pro progressive programs information and resources that are kind of critical to the architectural fields to our students. Previously, AIS has gone to many, um, we call it forums, and it's kind of like these huge conferences where architectural students across the country get together and they get to like meet professionals in the field. It's a huge networking event and they've gone to all sorts of places. So I think it was last December they went to Toronto. I was able to go to Seattle with them. Um, they've gone at Houston, Texas, uh, Philadelphia, and it goes on. They really strive to get our students connected to the field, but not just here locally, but more on a national level. All right. And then um, Aurora, would you like to talk about NOMAS? So hello everyone, my name is Aurora Peralt, and I am the current president of the National Organization of Minority Architects. In the Construction Institute student organization. And so NOMAS is an organization that hopes, focuses on inclusion within the industry and how diversity is affected. And most of what we do is educational and other types of events that help with the studio, such as we recently had a virtual game night and we focus, want to have other stuff, like we're working on a panel to look at diversity within the architecture industry and the education, which was inspired by a panel by, led by one of our professors, Ted Sarr. Then the Construction Institute is a way to connect with professionals within the construction industry and has a focus on developing people's skills and gives people the opportunity to get professional certificates. You're muted. Professor Fuller, you're muted. <laughs> I always do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> I just want to say that Aurora is on the uh, uh, ultimate Frisbee team too. So she's, she does great with the, with the outside of the department as well. 
I would like the other students to introduce themselves and say a few words. Uh, Brandon, Brandon Fuentes. How's it going, everybody? Uh, my name is Brandon Fuentes. I am a senior architecture major pursuing the advanced master's program. Um, I am a previous eboard member of AIAS. I was their secretary last semester. Um, going off of what Renee said, uh, AIAS is a great way to get involved beyond the classes of architecture. Um, as you can see in the top photo, we uh, built our Brian Hilbert uh, designed and then we built a sukkah for the Hallel community on campus. Um, that was a very successful project. Um, and that was through also Freedom by Design. Um, uh, me personally, um, I'm a Tau Sigma Delta Honor Society member, uh, National Society of Leadership and Success. Um, and I actually just came back uh, from a semester abroad in Florence. Um, it was a great opportunity to go with classmates um, and explore a different uh, part of the world while studying what you love, architecture. Um, seeing uh, older architecture and combining it with like new architectural ideas and just exploring around Italy and beyond Italy um, was a great experience. Um, unfortunately, it was cut short due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but still great opportunity and highly recommended if you want to pursue study abroad opportunities. Great. Thank you, Bren. Uh, Alexia, can you introduce yourself and say a few words? Hi, I'm Alexia Salafia. I'm a junior here in architecture. Um, I'm the treasurer of Women in Architecture and Design. I'm also involved in AIS. I was able to go with them to Seattle my freshman year. Um, I work in the wood shop and digital fabrication lab for work study. So if you have work study and you come to the school, there's opportunities to do it in the architecture department and it helps you learn the, the machines better and tools. So yeah, it's a pretty cool experience. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Alexia. Yeah, I didn't mention that before, we do have a, a very extensive wood shop and fabrication lab. Uh, so the wood shop is where you can put uh, projects together, either uh, we're looking at doing a furniture course, but it's also a place where you build models uh, in the wood shop. And um, as Alexia said, there are opportunities to do work study in those areas as well. The fabrication lab has 3D printers and laser cutters and you'll get involved with that definitely by second year in school to uh, use those tools to uh, cut up models, present, prepare models for your design studio. Um, I, there's one question here before we go on to, uh, to Jason. Hold on, Jason, just a minute. There's one question about uh, how many places are available for study abroad programs. It's really not quite unlimited, but it's pretty close. Uh, we have students that have gone to certainly Italy, a variety of locations in Italy. We've had students that have gone to Australia and New Zealand, uh, Greece, um, Great Britain, of course, uh, Denmark, Sweden, uh, basically all over Europe and all over the world. And our study abroad office at the university is very good at placing you in locations where you want to go. I think they have a location where you can study architecture almost anywhere in the world. So it's not really limited. Uh, with our own situation, when we send Professor Sarek to study abroad. Of course, that's, that's pretty much in Italy, although uh, we have talked about looking at um, going to Cambodia and other locations in, the, in, the, um, in uh, uh, Southeast Asia, but also other places around the world. So uh, it's, it's very, very broad. You have a lot of opportunities to do study abroad in a variety of locations. Uh, Jason, can you introduce yourself and say, say some words, say a few things. I thought Jason was here. Yes. Can you hear me now? There you are. Okay, Jason. Yes. <laughs> hey, how That's are you? Good. Uh, good. <laughs> um, so my name is Jason Marandino. I'm a sophomore at the University of Hartford, um, and I'm an uh, architectural design plus technology major with a minor in civil engineering. Um, so I'm pretty involved on campus. I'm the CETA ambassador this year with, along with the CETA senator for SBA. Um, I'm also involved with the AIS as a member. And then as a kind of subunit, as 
I am the um, public works manager for the Freedom by Design group, um, which is a you know subdivision of AIS. And I'm also with the NOMAS organization as a sophomore representative. Um, and aside from architecture, I'm also with RHA, which is the Residential Hall Association. And um, new this year is the Residential Public Safety Association, which I will also, which I am also a part of. Great, thanks, Jason. And, and everyone's, you can see all the students are very busy. There's a lot of things to get involved with uh, yeah. to keep busy, to meet other, other students and get involved with the, with the activities on the, on the campus. And behind Jason there was an image of the one of the first year dorms, uh, Hawk Hall here on campus. There it is. <laughs> Good. And uh, we have Caroline Marshak. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. I was about to say I wasn't sure if you saw my message. Go ahead. Yep, yep. Caroline Marshak is here as well. Hi, Caroline. Glad you can make it today. You want to say a few things about yourself and, and your uh, pursuing dual degrees, two degrees. I am. So hello, everyone. My name is Carolyn Marchak. So I am a sophomore at the University of Hartford. I'm a double major. So I'm doing civil engineering and architectural engineering. So I have a five year program. So it's a two plus three. And my schedule is kind of made up of both civil engineering classes and architectural engineering classes. So I have a good division of both. I'm a part of um, the Society of Women Engineers on campus. I'm their secretary this year. Um, I'm part of the lead cohort, which is um, the, women, the Women's Advancement Initiative on campus. Um, I am also, I also work for the NASA Space Grant Consortium on campus. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm also a part of the CETA ambassador. So as you can see, we're all very busy encouraging students to come. And honestly, this is a great program. So if anyone's ever interested in doing the dual, I highly suggest it. Great. Thank you, Carolyn. Glad you could join us tonight. That's great. Uh, so that's, that's our, our formal presentation. And again, we have a lot of students here. We have uh, Evan from uh, admissions and we have uh, Dean Zeiser as well to answer any questions. So we'll open it up now to any questions you may have and uh, we'll be happy to answer any, any questions. Uh, Professor Fuller, there was a question asked earlier that I was saving to start us off, which I thought you would be the perfect person to answer, and maybe Caroline uh, could answer a little bit because she's a dual degree. Uh, how easy or difficult is it to change your major to architecture if you initially start out in another engineering degree like civil engineering? Okay. Uh, it's, it's fairly easy, actually. Uh, it, if you start off in civil engineering, uh, switching to architecture is actually a little easier than switching the other way because civil engineering, you are required to take a higher level of math and a higher level of physics than architecture. So if you start off in civil engineering and decide, yeah, it's not quite for you for some whatever reason, and you want to switch to architecture, then you've already taken probably the math and physics, so you'd be okay in architecture and you could pretty smoothly switch into it. If you start off in architecture and decide you want to do civil, a little more challenging. So if you come here and you want to, and you might think about gee, I want to do architecture, maybe I want to do civil as a minor, then we would recommend that you start off with the uh, math and physics required by civil. So you could make that switch or you could add that minor or that five year and make it a smooth transition. So architecture to civil, we'd have to make sure you take the right courses. Civil to architecture, you're, you're pretty well set. Caroline, you want to add anything to that? pretty much said everything, Professor. So definitely with the math and sciences, it is, a, it is very different from just a regular architecture student. So as a civil engineer, you have another year, uh, a whole other semester actually of physics that you do. And depending on right now, I know I'm it, kind of discussing if I'm going to take another year of physics. So most architecture students have the first semester. And then also math is very different. So my freshman year, I took calculus one and calculus two. And right now I'm in statics and I'll be taking dynamics. So very different on kind of math. So definitely as Professor Fuller said, if you are leaning more towards the civil engineering side rather than the architectural engineering side, I would go to that first and then switch over. But it's easily doable in the end if you find what you love. <laughs>
You're on mute, Professor. Sorry, I keep doing that. <laughs> There's a question about uh, inter someone's interested in both uh, business and architecture. How can I best combine the two? I think that's a very good question. I think what I recommend doing is doing a minor in business. Uh, and it, uh, a minor at the University of Hartford is typically six courses or 18 credits. And three of those courses would count towards your architecture degree, uh, possibly four, depending on the course you take. And you would have to take an additional two courses. But our, our curriculum is set up where that's flexible, especially the first, the first year. So if you're thinking about combining business and architecture, then we would set you up again in that first, the fall of your first year to start taking some business courses so you can be able to finish that uh, minor business and uh, business minor in the same time frame as you finish your architecture. Um, that, that we, we could get that coordinated pretty well. Uh, if you're thinking about doing a, a actual bachelor's degree in business and a bachelor's degree in architecture, uh, that's a little more challenging. It would probably most likely not be done in four years. It might be a five-year program. But if you want to do both, I, I always ask students or tell students that think beyond just the four years, think about your career. And if you want to combine something like business degree with an architecture degree, which is a great combination, and it takes you five years, then it's worth it in the long run. So I, I always say, you know, don't, don't let sort of one year uh, hold you back from, from pursuing something you really want to pursue. Okay. Other questions, Evan? Any other questions there? Well, I think uh, Jace asked a question that I think every single student on the call could weigh in on, starting with Renee, because she was the one that claimed yeah. it first. So, Renee, I'll let you answer that. We can just pass that around to all the students on the call. Hi. So, um, I personally did, well, I guess the question was, did you have any architectural experience going in um, were the first architectural classes manageable as a beginner. And so personally, I had very little architectural experience coming into the program. Um, I was able to do like a little summer program at Rensselaer Polytechnical Institute, where I kind of got to see like what it was like to be part of like an architectural studio. But other than that, like I really had no experience with drafting or computer rendering or anything like that coming in. Um, your first architectural class here at the university will be a studio class and that it will be your first year studio will, where you will learn all about graphics, um, both hand drawn and then I think you will also be introduced into a computer course as well. Um, but you do not need experience coming in and they are very manageable, manageable classes. Um, and if you find yourself struggling, we are a huge support team here at the university. So if you are struggling, there's always someone else that is struggling too, and then there's always ways to get help. Whether it's talking to upperclassmen or talking to your professors, we are here to make sure that you succeed, and we always love to like make sure that you guys are doing okay. I would kind of like to add on to that too. I really like what you said, Renee, but coming into the program, I was in a mentorship in high school, like three years, where they talked about we got to firsthand do some drafting and learn floor plans and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't really have too much experience. And coming in, I joined AIS and a couple other clubs and I got to become friends with some of the seniors who helped me actually with some of my first projects. So it's really good to get involved in clubs because then you can make friends and we're always here to help. <laughs> I would also like to add on to that. We're in the studio. If you have an issue with anything, whether it is hand drafting or digitally, there's usually someone in the studio that you can walk around and be like, hey, do you know how to do this? And most people are willing to help. That's how I did most of my first things where I had very little architectural experience before coming in and I did more art in high school but had no problem with the classes because of all the help. I also want to add on to that. Um, so uh, me starting out, um, I came in knowing two computer software programs, um, not so much hand drafting or modeling. Um, in high school, I did a lot of CNC machining um, through those software programs. So I kind of knew um, where the direction I was heading in for architecture um, for the next few years. Um, but coming into architecture, um, really didn't know what to expect for the first uh, class that I would be taking. 
Um, but I've had um, multiple people come up to me and ask me questions about um, how do I do this like for the first class that you take as a freshman? Um, is this the right scale? Is this how you do this? Um, anybody in the studio is a very good studio environment. Everybody would be willing to answer that question, no problem. There is no stupid questions at all because um, everyone's just helping each other um, get through their struggles of architecture um, and um, very supportive group in the studio for sure. Um, and just to add on to that, considering that I am a sophomore and I just was a freshman, um, I think just to add on to that is it's also aside from the studio class, you also have a history class too. And you know, a lot of these courses that you are going to take go hand in hand. So it does help you when you go through all the classes and you don't have that, you know, that background that when you do the history class and you do the studio, you know, they all go hand in hand. And like all the other um, students were saying, you know, everyone's here to help. So that's also just something that I wanted to add to that conversation. I can even, there we go. I can even add on to what Jason said as well. So coming in freshman year, I had taken computer aided design classes and architecture classes in high school, but there were some gaps in my learning. So I had friends who would help me out my freshman year and I would help them out with my strengths. So we, as students, we help each other with our others with their um, their weaknesses, and they help us with our own. So my greatest weakness, and still to this day that I'm working on, is how to properly architecturally write on all my designs. And I luckily met one of these girls who has been helping me work through that the entire time, and I helped her with a bunch of things. So. The support system is always there from the students to the professors, so you never have to worry about being alone. Great, thank you all. That's great, great uh, first hand experience with those questions. Um, Evan, is there another question that you uh, want to queue up? Or I see a question out there now that I could answer, but is there another one that you want to head before that? Um, there was a question before this uh, that was answered via text by Alexia, but if someone went away and they could, the question was, is there anything that we could study beforehand or do beforehand that would make our college life easier, I'm guessing, in relation to architecture? So Alexia had a nice text answer. I don't know if anyone else wanted to add on to that. Yeah, any of the students want to jump in there? Yeah, sure. Um, so for your first class um, as a freshman, um, what I would recommend to start getting into um, if you want to make your life easier uh, is to just start drawing stuff like go out and sit for a few hours and just sketch like find a building find something that you want to sketch and just sketch it because that's the main thing that you'll be doing freshman year also um, you could start um, looking at um, exercises for modeling online um, doing these small modeling projects out of, uh, we use chipboard. Uh, it's basically a thin cardboard material. Um, there's definitely some little modeling exercises online, I'm sure. Uh, you could just look and like maybe build a little house um, just to get yourself exposed to not only hand drawing, but uh, model making as well, uh, because uh, those two are um, highly emphasized in freshman year. So. Um, it'd be best to start diving into those things early. So you know what to expect when you come to Hartford. Brandon, before you cut your, your video and your mic, the next question actually would be good for you too. And then I can let Professor Fuller come in because he obviously knows best. Uh, but uh, I'm interested in UHART's five year, uh, the, the combined bachelor and master. Is there something, is this something you declare as an incoming freshman? You are a master's candidate in the program, correct? Yes. So um, once I was, um, well, let's, let me start over. Uh, when I was a freshman, um, I was just focused on four years um, and then I'll decide about graduate school when I get further into the program. Um, so when you're in sophomore year, um, 
there is a big change from hand drafting to computer using computers for your projects. Um, and then when you start junior year is really when you uh, need to start deciding if you are going to pursue the uh, advanced track or not. Um, this is just mainly to get your classes in order and start taking the classes that are required to be eligible to be in the accelerated master's program. Um, and for me, I started doing that junior year, um, just lining up these classes and just going through the list of required classes and taking them, leading me up to my senior year. Um, and uh, I'm taking required classes as well, as well as uh, the first few grad courses for the accelerated master's program. Um, and then that would continue on spring semester. And then as Professor Fuller said, through the summer and then one more academic year, and then um, you would be graduated with your master's of architecture. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, I think that was good. And I think Professor yeah. if you wanted to follow that up. That'd be great. Oh, that's great. Brandon answered really well. I think you, in, the simple answer is no, you do not have to declare it as a, as a first year student. Uh, typically, you wouldn't declare, as Brandon said, till uh, your junior year. And we've actually, since Brandon joined, we've actually modified the curriculum a little bit. And it's a little easier now, a little smoother to get into the accelerated master's program. We actually have uh, elective courses that are reserved in the senior year. So if you are in the accelerated program, you just take those elective courses rather than some other courses. And so there's no, there's no juggling in the in, in junior year to line up with the accelerated program. It's a very smooth process now. Um, so, but typically you, you'd want to think about it in your third year so that then you can notify your advisor and meet with the graduate program director, Professor Holmes, and make sure everything's lined up for that senior year. But first, first year, no, you do not have to decide then. I saw a question earlier about, and maybe Evan already answered this question about the enrollments and do we limit, do we have a cap on the number of enrollments? Again, we're about 165 total students in the four years and 28 graduate students, but we're looking to increase our undergraduate enrollment to about 180. That's a comfortable number for us, comfortable cap. Uh, we were at 200 at one point, and frankly, that was too many, to be honest with you. We didn't like that many. We like to keep it small, as I said. So we, we look to enroll between 55 and 60 first year students every fall. And uh, this, this year we're at 53. So we're sort of right in the sweet spot there. Um, but we're not, we don't intentionally look at uh, reducing the number of first year students, but we look for students that are, are uh, sort of line up with our program uh, goals and, and, their, uh, and their skills. So um, uh, we're looking again to enroll about in the mid fifties to around 60 first year students. And there's a question here about co-op programs. Uh, we do not have a formal co-op program. We do have a lot of connections, as I said, with uh, architectural firms, engineering firms, and landscape architecture firms, and construction management companies uh, throughout Connecticut. And we will help you, in fact, throughout the Northeast, uh, we will help you get internships, uh, and, uh, which are typically in the summer because of the time constraints, uh, but we don't have a formal co-op program. Uh, we are actually developing, um, I have a committee of my advisory board, the department's advisory board, that is working on drafting a uh, formal internship or co-op program that would allow us to uh, guarantee an internship experience for all uh, third year students and above. Uh, but right now they're still in the works. And to be honest, we've, we've explored it for many years. Um, our concern about having a required internship is that we want to make sure students can get those positions. And uh, we've, we've heard some stories from other universities where they've had a required internship and uh, sometimes the economy dips a little bit and the students could not get an internship and so they could not graduate on time. And we don't want that to happen. So we are exploring that right now and we are confident we'll be able to develop a program and get uh, buy-ins from firms to be able to uh, guarantee an internship experience for for all our students at the, at the third year level. But uh, right now we do not require it. Evan, any other questions? I think that, I mean, that 
is everything we've got so far in the Q and A box. I wanted to ask one question. Uh, like I'm looking for two sentences out of the the students on the call um, for uh, Brandon, which is the only senior that I know on the call. I'm sorry, I'm not sure uh, if Aurora is a senior or not, uh, but I know that Brandon is. Um, Brandon, would you like, you know, what are you looking forward to the most upon graduation? You know, you're moving into the master's program. Like what, what are you looking forward to? Well, um, I'm looking forward to just learning more about architecture in general. Um, uh, going through undergrad uh, really exposes you to um, different areas of architecture um, through your studio projects, um, as well as uh, construction document classes um, and uh, building systems classes. Um, so right now um, I'm taking uh, advanced building systems, which is uh, very interesting to me. I'm learning about uh, sustainable building systems, building uh, design strategies um, to like design for a more sustainable future. So um, I'm going through that process right now and I'm loving it. Um, and I just can't wait to go further into depth uh, in the field of architecture um, and uh, graduate with masters, a master's degree in architecture. And then um, I am looking forward to going out and marketing myself for an architecture firm, um, gaining experience through an architecture firm, um, through internships and um, recording hours towards uh, licensure uh, to be able to sit for the uh, ARE and um, ultimately become an architect. So that's what I'm looking forward to uh, in the immediate and uh, future. You laid it out perfectly. That's great. Um, and you are the only senior that we have on the call. So I just wanted to make sure. So, yeah. So uh, I know we have three juniors, um, Renee, Aurora, and uh, Alexia. So if the three of you just quickly, like, you know, moving from your, your junior year into your senior year, what's the thing that you're looking forward to and what are you excited about? I can go first here. So moving from my junior year into my senior year, um, it's something that like, I guess I've kind of been excited the entire process, but like, I'm just excited to learn more. So like each year, like you're constantly learning no matter what, like even I guess like, even when you leave, like your educational or academia, you're still going to be learning. And it's just, I feel like every year I just learn more and I'm able to do more. And then like, I get to see like the progression of like where I started and where I am now. And to me, that's really exciting. Perfect. Thank you. Aurora, if you want to go ahead. I was trying to grab the right mouse. So what I'm looking forward to with the senior year is just being able to go more in depth into a design since our senior year focuses on a single design. And I also look forward to work like working on the accelerated masters and getting to learn a bunch more and hopefully getting a chance to study abroad. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Alexia? Hi, so I'm really looking forward to having more studio professors. So far I've had quite a variety of them and I really liked all of them because they all taught us different things and they all have different backgrounds. So that's something really cool about the architecture department. You get different points of views from different professors and I'm looking forward to the capstone project too because I've seen a lot of them and they just seem really neat. So I know it's gonna be challenging, but <laughs> it'll be fun. I think, I think most people probably feel that way in the junior year is that it's challenging and it's fun. That's a good way of looking at it. Um, uh, so Jason, just, you know, what, are, what is the thing, you know, you're, you're only a sophomore, you know, but you're already involved in so much and you have a long uh, journey ahead of you. What's the thing that you're looking forward to the most, you know, and what, what advice would you give to first year students since you just completed your first year? Um, so what I'm looking forward to most is definitely, you know, the experiences. I mean, so far in freshman year, we had two really good final projects. And one thing that most people don't talk about are the crit sessions, too, where you meet with professionals and you talk to, you know, the upperclassmen and they come and they, you know, look at your final projects and stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, having more of those um, 
you know, opportunities throughout the next couple of years. And then some advice for freshmen coming in would be, you know, just be open minded to the program. I mean, a lot of kids, you know, they get into the program and they, you know, get a little bit of stress and stuff like that. But it really is a program where you can, you know, branch out and learn about architecture. And you do have a great support system. I just want to keep reiterating that because, like, there will be nights where you're just like, you know, in the studio, you know, you're with your friends and stuff like that. And, you know, you get to a hard spot, a project, and you can literally go to anybody in the studio and they'll be willing to answer your questions. So it's something that, you know, just be open minded and just, you know, Go along with the program and you know see how it works out. Perfect. That's very good advice. I appreciate that, Jason. And Carolyn, the same. You're also a sophomore. You just completed your first year. What advice would you give to to a first year student? So nothing that wasn't already said. So Jason said a lot of good points. How um, just you need to be open and willing to try new things and always be willing to ask for help. So. Everything that you do there, everyone's been through, and you just always ask questions. Um, make sure that, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Um, make sure that you just have fun with it as well because everyone's learning. All of the projects are going to be fun because you're going to start something and learn how just light and color affects one thing, and then you'll just think about the structure in another point of view. So just <laughs> just um be willing to learn and have fun with it perfect thank you carolyn that's great so thank you to the students that joined on the call um that's awesome um professor fuller we did get one more question in q a uh what is your placement rate percentage i'll let you handle it however you would, you would like to answer that question sure sure happy to do that uh, the latest information we have based on our, our alumni survey is that we have about an 85 to 90 percent placement rate. Uh, and then we have some, some students that go on and get jobs that don't unfortunately don't tell us. Uh, and also that doesn't include students that are in graduate programs. So a very high placement rate and, uh, and into, the, into the fields. And I think that's because we prepare students well and we also provide a variety of, of paths for them to go based on what their expertise is and what their skills are. And, and what their interest is. So I think it's, it's, it's a pretty high acceptance rate or pretty high placement rate. Evan, I want to go back to just a couple of comments about a couple of previous questions, if I could, for one minute. Um, go ahead. Someone mentioned about preparing to go into architecture school and the students gave great answers for that. I really can't add any more than what they said, but I will say that we are, uh, we will be having a summer program in architecture next year, next summer in summer of 21. So if there are any juniors out there or even seniors, if you want to, experience a, a sort of an intense uh, two-week summer program that is about architecture to sort of get you uh, prepared to uh, enroll in architecture school next year, or if you're a junior, to be thinking about architecture school in the fall of 22, uh, look for us. We'll be doing a summer program uh, next August. And the other question that came up too was about what else, a student asked about what else could you do to prepare for school? And um, uh, there's some great answers with uh, Brandon's comment about doing drawing and sketching, which I think is perfect. I'd also say if you have a chance this year in high school uh, to take some sculpture classes, take some classes that involve creating three-dimensional objects, you know, sculpture, ceramics, that's a great way to start thinking about designing buildings. Uh, drawings are fantastic because you will need to know how to draw uh, as an architect and certainly as an architecture student. Uh, but it, the getting into some sculpture classes or ceramic classes where you can play with models, play with materials that allow you to think three-dimensionally, I think that's a great preparation for, uh, for architecture school. 